Hey, I'm Joel. Thanks for watching The Joy of Fixing. Today we're going to be installing a flue, or an updraft regulator flap, to a 6-inch wood-burning stove pipe. So, I've got this great wood-burning stove. Ashley style has the automated thermostat in it. So what happens here is I can regulate my air intake with this knob and it opens up this door down at the bottom and allows air intake in. So I can turn it down low, doesn't let in a bunch of air, fire burns low. Open it up big, lets a lot of air in and the fire burns hot. But here's the problem I have. I don't have a flue on my chimney pipe. And the problem with that is the fire can get burning so hot and so intense that it is just sucking for air as hard as it can and it's still getting this pipe way too hot. Basically, the updraft can get so strong that it is just like force vacuuming air into this thing and it finds every little crack into places I really don't want the air to get into the stove. So, what we're gonna do is install a flue in this six inch stove pipe and it's pretty darn easy. So let me show you what we're doing here. All right, so check this out. We're literally not even past most of the kindling and it's already blowing up through that pipe. Granted, I'm leaving a lot of air for it, but this is just a great example of what happens when the fire gets bigger and it can draw its own air. Watch this. See how it's already burning up through the chimney? Imagine what that's like stoked full of wood. It's just blowing long flames, foot long up that chimney. And all I've got in here is just a couple little teeny weeny logs to get started. So look, I mean, now it's got the updraft. Boy, I'm not even doing anything. This is why you add the flu, right? So I'm not gonna let it get any more out of control, but I can tell you when the wood is up to here, the whole thing is on fire and it is just ripping like a solid column of flames up that pipe. And it is dangerous and it is loud and it is too hot because we can't regulate how hot it burns. Even using the thermostat and the air intake, it just gets too hot. It's gonna pull air harder than we want. So we need to shut down that updraft and get it pulling the way we want. Plus that lets my wood burn for a lot longer instead of constantly burning at maximum heat that it can achieve. I have no control at that point. Let's get one more shot of that. Look at that. You don't want that. Okay, so what I have is this flue. Now you buy them just like this and it's real simple. All we're gonna do is come over here to the pipe and separate the pipe at the joint. And we're gonna drill a hole in one side, drill a hole in the other, and then put this up in and slide it through. This just disassembles like this. That's gonna go up in the pipe. We're gonna push this through the holes that we drill, out the other side, then push it in on the spring so that this little part here catches and flip it up and that'll install and we'll have a nice rotating flue in here where we can control the updraft. That should allow my wood to burn twice as long. So let's do it now. So first thing we're gonna do here is separate this pipe. I don't have any screws in it because I was going to install a flue. So let me just get her open here. Ooh, those ones are stuck real good. Might have to slide the whole stove out to do this one, which isn't a big deal. Yep, we're gonna slide the stove out. There we are. So, dirty hands, get used to it. We're working with soot and with black powder coated pipe and take this whole pipe off. So, there's the inside of your six inch pipe. What we're gonna do, like I said before, is we're gonna insert this down into the pipe. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the pipe is actually round enough to accommodate this flue plate. So I'm gonna just drop it down in there, about where it's gonna go. Yep, plenty of room to move. These are actually undersized. Obviously it's not perfectly tight. It leaves a small draft, but that's good because when we're installing it, it's not a total nightmare. So next thing to do is I am still gonna make sure it's about as round as I want it. Sometimes that seam side gets flattened out because when you put it together, it just forces it a little flat. One more fit there. You can see it's down in there. It'll rotate like that. So the hardest part of this, other than getting the pipe ready, is we need to figure out direct opposites on this, okay? 
Now there's hard ways to do it. There's easy ways to do it. Here's what I like to do. This already just barely fits up here, even at the tight crimped section, which means if I can find the straight across that fits up here in the tight section, I can definitely find it down there. So let's stick this back on its little shaft. And set it right there on top. I'm going to have the seam in the back, which means it's like this. So what I'm going to do is take this and fit it the best I can to this hole, keeping that seam in mind. It just barely rested on that seam. And now it is ready to rotate into that hole very easily. The only thing blocking it here is this piece of cake. So now what I need to do is I need to transfer this line and this line straight down the shaft to where I can install the flue piece of cake. So here's an easy way to do it. If you don't have a square or anything like that, I've got an old cardboard flap to a notebook that I got at a convention. Let me just tear this thing off. Any piece of cardboard or anything with a square edge is going to work great for this, okay? The reason I like this is because if you take a look, this is curved and it's hard to put a square on a curved surface. But what's not hard is putting this right up against the edge and curving it around. So now I know that I'm going to have a plumb line because this is level with the thing. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of cardboard and I'm going to line it up to the top of my stove pipe there. Nice and level. Perfect. Now I'm going to drop this line right down where I want the flue. And I'm going to mark it way up here where I'm sure that there's room for the flue to rotate. Right there. Boop, 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 boop. And then I'm also going to line up that cardboard and I'm going to leave a mark on the cardboard. Now I want to be sure that's directly underneath this thing. Right there. Okay. So now I'm going to leave it alone and go right to the other side. This is all still set up. I'm moving it. So now I'm going to set it up to the other side. This is still rotating good. Looks like it fits right. The spline is where I need it to be. And again, I've got my mark there. I'm going to line this up to the top of the metal and make sure that, that this plumb side is directly underneath the center of the shaft on this flue. I am plumb. There, that is lined up perfect. And my line, my drill hole ought to go right about there. That's it. Now, we just got to drill some holes and put this back together. So we're gonna to wanna to pick a drill bit that's slightly bigger than this shaft. And this seems to be a little small. It's okay for the hole to be just a little bigger. You want it to be able to move around, especially when the stove heats up, you wanna be able to have it able to still be moving. I like that, just a little bit big. Now don't be worried about smoke getting out and all these little holes having smoke puff all over your house. I've seen guys put together huge chunks of these chimneys without ever even putting any tape or anything on them. You just screw it together because the updraft is keeping all that smoke moving in line to where it can escape. So don't worry about these little teeny holes, it's fine. So let's drill these holes. Nice. Now, here we go. We're gonna take this again Push that little guy out of there so you can rotate the lock out. Okay, we're gonna drop this down in the pipe. You can see the holes down there. Then we're gonna take our center piece there. We're gonna push it in until it lines up and then back out the other side. And then to lock this in place and give us control, once again, we're going to push that piece right there. We're going to hold that in place, push this piece in, and turn and lock that little locker pin into place. I'm trying not to cut my hand. There we go. Let's push it in, turn it, and lock it. And now I have control of this flue. And I actually wanted it rubbing that seam just a little because that helps me have it lock in place. So now I can either open it a little and this spring here holds pressure on it so the flue will hold its position. But 
that's looking pretty good. So let's install this pipe back onto the thing and get a fire going. Alright, I just gotta knock this elbow in a little tighter. That's about it. Now for good measure, I'm gonna put a nice little stainless steel self-tapper screw in there. If you never use self-tapper screws, they're called self-tappers because they already have a drill bit on the tip. So it'll tap the hole and run the screw right in. So here's something I'll show you. I'm already just getting it started and watch how these flames reach up for that pipe without any regulation of the updraft. I'm gonna shut the camera in here a little bit. And still, there's a ton of extra air coming through, so this isn't a perfect representation, but here. So now that we have the flue installed, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's not regulated. Let's open this fire up. Now it's simmering pretty low in here, but here we go. We're gonna open it up and give it some air supply here. Okay. You can see how hard that flame is blowing all the way up to the top there, right? So this is totally unregulated air intake and air output just going crazy all the way up to the chimney and this wood isn't even burning hard let's just give it a minute here on on a time lapse so you can see with almost no time at all how out of control this can get this thing will get billowing so hard that it'll just start blowing up the chimney with just zero control see that see how crazy the flames are up there that start ripping up the chimney so now let's regulate that draft and leave the airflow the same Go ahead and turn that eighth of a turn. There, like that. See, it's not all the way open, but it's not all the way closed. There we go. Now you can see it starts to calm down. It's not chasing up that pipe and the wood is just in there burning. Now, when I close the door, which I can't put my camera in there or it will melt, but once I close all the air intake to the stove and really get some control over the oxygen distribution in it, everything simmers like that or less and it's not even going up to the chimney hole anymore. And we've regulated our air intake and our output. So now you can see with that flue engaged, I'm just in here simmering. And only because I opened the door is it kicking up like that again. If it was closed, I'd have more regulated, but I got this big hole with the air. So like you can see, much better with the flue, total control. And there's not a lot of air open there, which means it can only go so fast. Now I can just set my air intake to right there. When it gets hot, it'll close itself. When it gets cold, it'll open itself. But when there was no flu, the air intake would go like this because the air is sucking so hard trying to get up that flu and find oxygen. Now it's gonna do what I want because we have regulation on both ends. So that's it. That's all you need to know about putting a flue in your wood burner. Not that crazy, super helpful. Um, it's very hard to film what's going on inside the firebox because I'm doing it with a cellular phone and honestly, I just don't want to melt my iPhone. So, you know, I hope that it was clear enough to help you understand what's going on in there. Use your imagination. I don't think you ought to try to climb into the fire and see it for yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like the video if this was helpful. I know that uh, this is going to help me a lot in my real life, so I hope it would help you and yours as well. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, ask some questions. I didn't cover everything in this video because I didn't want to make it too long. It's a very simple thing. The longest part of this video is just kind of explaining like what the values of adding that flu are and why it's so much safer. And of course, I wouldn't mind if you subscribed. I'm going to be doing a lot of little helpful videos like this. No cheesy life hacks know how you can build a house with super glue, but legit things that a homeowner and just people maintaining a home can do to enhance their life, save some money, make it safer, and just fix stuff. So don't be afraid to try to fix something. Don't be afraid to try to make something better. Thanks for watching. God bless.